you know, in, in thinking about how we change the corporate behavior of any entity, I guess we have to uh, look at this both in terms of uh, push and pull or, or, or both carrots and sticks that are used, right? Um, and I, I think you know, small to medium producers present a, a, a distinct challenge in the Indonesian context because, as you said, many of these are, are uh, less responsive to, to, to campaigns because they're not facing markets that would be sensitive to these issues. Um, but uh, you know, the extent to which um, we can work on, on making a persuasive business case for sustainability, most especially in relation to, to social aspects of, of development, um, uh, making persuasive arguments about the, the, the long-term cost savings and the licenses to operate and the continuity of the business that arises from commitment to sustainability on the, on, on the social side. That's a very important one. Um, I think it's also very important to, to think about, you know, there's growing interest and focus on how we can engage more effectively with local government. Um, in some respects, if we think about working with the myriad number of small to medium uh, growers in Indonesia, it's an almost, almost infinite and, and constantly growing pool of people. On the other hand, if we can work more productively with local government to, to, to make uh, more effective uh, enforcement and greater demands that are placed on all producers within geographies that they control, both small, medium, and large scale, then we're effectively reaching uh, much larger groups uh, of companies than we would be by taking each of them on individually. Um, it's a very complicated task looking forward and nobody sort of sees uh, this um, you know, as, as an easy job, but um, it is something that has to be addressed. I, I think you know, it's, um, it's important for us to, to, to keep a, a sort of a proper perspective and the, the sort of extent of change that we've seen already in the last three to five years, which are really dramatic in relation to what our expectations were when the whole sort of process of engagement began with the private sector in Indonesia. Um, I, I think it's also very important though for us to recognize that you know, we're, we're, we're engaging with the private sector in, a, in sort of a very stepwise fashion. In many ways working with companies, as you point out, that are sort of the most amenable to thinking in terms of longer term sustainability and impacts on the environment. Um, in that sort of, a, in that sort of, an, of, of, an, of an of an engagement process, where we're engaging with a segment but not all of them, uh, we're, we're sort of looking at a situation today wherein most of the companies that will commit to avoiding high risk, um, maybe, uh, maybe high emission or, or um, uh, high biodiversity areas, this is really you know, to the extent that we can work productively with them, we're, we're dealing um, successfully at avoidance. Right? So if we can convince a lot of these key companies to stay out of these high-risk areas, we've eliminated the risk of immediate deforestation, but we haven't protected and secured those areas. So in, in, you know, in the question, you know, how um, realistic is it for us to think that these private sector commitments will happen, will translate to action quickly enough on the ground to save forests, I think we really have to think about this in two, in two, two respects. How quickly we can convince them to avoid, but once they are avoided, by these large companies that have committed sustainability, what's going to happen with those areas to protect and secure them from other companies that haven't made similar commitments yet? And this is an area where, again, it's a very complicated um, a problem for us to tackle, but it's also an area where engagement with local government is critical. Uh, because if you don't have support at that local level, you forever have a risk of, of areas that have been, um, say, high risk areas that, that companies have agreed to avoid, there's always the risk of those, of those same land being licensed to other parties who are less committed to sustainability issues. So we have to think about this both in terms of avoidance, protection, and part of that protection um, uh, scenario uh, uh, depends upon more, more effective engagement with government as well. You know, in, in, I'm going to speak to this, if we imagine sort of the, the small-scale plantation operators today. First of all, the answer to your question is, are we asking those people you know, and these operators the questions that need to be asked? I think on the whole, probably most of us are not, because most of us are still engaging with larger segments of the private sector. Um, uh, but you know, I, I think, what are their needs and, and what sort of investment incentives might they respond to? I mean, I think it's also important for us to keep in mind that this varies tremendously across geographic areas. Um, most companies, small, medium, large, all struggle with issues related to how, how to manage social aspects of their business. Um, there's a lot of learning, a lot of success stories, but not, 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 not many, much of that learning you know, permeates through industry as it needs to. So without having asked small-scale producers what, what their real needs are, I, I can safely assume when I would suggest that uh, attention focused on uh, 
helping them plan and implement successful social programs related to smallholders, related to livelihood support, related to broader um, um, local community uh, support for local, local uh, institutions and so forth would be an area where all of them would be in need.